You might say it was anything but by the numbers for Kathy Griffin, who joined Anderson Cooper in Times Square last night. She's been shocking, even offending audiences with her comedy for years now. But as our Mo Rocca discovered, she makes no apologies. Thank you so much. Let me just say, I'm going to be so politically incorrect, you might get sued just for being in the audience. <laughs> Kathy Griffin makes fun of pretty much everyone. I swear to God, my mom was just messing with me. Her mother, Maggie. But, you know, you give her a box of Franzia and she's good to go. I like to have a brow lift once, twice a year. Herself. Where they just take my eyebrows and put them on a totally different part of my head. Um, and more than anyone else. Going after Paltrow, Tommy Lee, Larry King, Renee Zellweger, Pam Anderson. Hollywood fun, stars. Uh, so like, Uma Thurman is there with her big bag of BS. Now, first of all, where the hell does she think she's from? You know she's from Boston, with that accent, all right? She's not from, you know, Europea, wherever she thinks she's from. A lot of people think she's funny. If you don't, well, she says, that's just too bad. I have a no apology policy. No apology. Yes. No apologies for jokes. I apologize in my real life all the time. I say ridiculous things, I make mistakes constantly, but when I'm on stage, I'm at a microphone, it's a joke. But sometimes the audience isn't quite in on the joke. And the nominees are... Like the time in 2007 when her reality show My Life on the D-List was nominated for an Emmy. And the Emmy for Outstanding Leaving nothing to chance, Griffin carefully to... plotted her speech. Kathy Griffin, My Life on the D-List. And advance warning, some of you will find what you're about to hear offensive. I wanted a speech that would be water cooler worthy, meaning I thought, if I don't get up there and say something outrageous, no one's gonna ever know I won an Emmy. Now look, a lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. People certainly knew she'd won that Emmy. So Jesus, this award is my God now! <laughs> the speech angered religious groups across the country, from the Catholic League to a Christian theater group in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which ran a full-page ad in USA Today denouncing Griffin. So if you were going to answer seriously somebody who said, Kathy Griffin, why are you attacking Christianity? What would you say? I mean, I wouldn't even indulge them in an answer. I probably wouldn't even say anything as serious as get over yourself. That sort of scorched earth approach to comedy has endeared her to fans. Isn't Scientology one of those things where you really like someone and then once you hear they're a Scientologist, you're like, mm, I'm out. You know? <laughs> but in Hollywood, she still gets surprisingly little respect. I'll be honest, there's a part of me that does think I'm held to a different standard than my contemporaries and peers, and it's a little frustrating. A few years ago, Vanity Fair did a spread on women in comedy. Why the heck were you not in there? Can I tell you, that one hit me hard. And normally, I try not to let that stuff bug me, but I have to admit, when I saw that cover, uh, uh, you know, I had a couple tearful days. You know, when I'm not in the Maxim Sexiest Comedians article, that one, you know, doesn't really <laughs> hurt. But the Vanity Fair one hurt because I'm such a fan of the magazine. Being a fan is what makes 51-year-old Kathy Griffin tick. She lays the blame squarely on her parents, John and Maggie, and her upbringing in Chicago, where the Griffins kept up on the latest celebrity gossip. Our dinner table conversations were often political current events, but also just peppered with a lot of celebrity, and we put these celebrities on such a pedestal. And you worshipped celebrity. It wasn't like a love-hate thing. No, I only worshipped celebrity at that time. Keep in mind, I had never met a celebrity and never right. thought I would in a million years. But Griffin did dream of heading west and becoming a star. So after graduating from high school, she convinced her parents to move to Los Angeles for their retirement. By day, Griffin hustled as a temp. At night, she honed her comedy chops at L.A.'s famed Groundlings Theater, all the while living at home. And her mom, Maggie, was just fine with that. She lived at home until she was 28. You know why I didn't want her own? I didn't want her posing like all the girls are posed uh, nude on uh, calendars. Yeah. Well, they had no money. So you didn't want Kathy having to go topless to make bread oh, and no, butter? Oh, no, 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 not at all. I didn't, I, honestly, I didn't, we didn't want her doing any of that stuff. Ms. Melissa Klein, sir. L.A. Press, Urban Beat. 
In the 1990s, her stand-up comedy led to guest appearances on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's showbiz. Everybody stinks. Yeah. You've been sticking since the 80s. All right, I think we've covered my act. And Seinfeld. And then, beginning in 1996, a four-year stint on the sitcom... Hey! Hands off the honker. Suddenly, Susan. Listen, you, when someone really has a schnoz like that, it's the last thing they see when they go to sleep at night and the first thing they see when they wake up in the morning. <laughs> so stock up on Fruit Loops, my little toucan. Class starts now. That job changed my life. Being able to give up my job as a temp and actually make a living doing comedy was staggering. But when it ended, what did you think was going to happen? When it ended, I crashed hard. And I thought that I was the breakout star from Suddenly Susan. And I was naturally going to segue into the Kathy Griffin show. And it would be like Seinfeld and Roseanne combined with my <laughs> point of view. And what happened was I didn't work for a year, cried, watched Oprah, and slept till one in the afternoon while eating Haagen-Dazs in my sleep. More than a nobody, but not quite a star, Griffin went back to stand-up. Put your hands together for Kathy Griffin! And discovered that her real-life awkward phase would make for a good... Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way! What else? Yeah, Reality show. I am a D-list celebrity. I own it. I screwed my way to the middle. My Life on the D-List, which won two Emmys and was a staple on Bravo for six years, laid bare Griffin's life. I spent half my time trying to get my name out there. Warts and all. Kathy Griffin is the funniest. It's Griffin! It's Griffin! Her marriage. And if that wasn't bad enough, Her divorce. And there went six years of my life. My dad was really special. And the death of her father, a beloved D-List regular. Don't take any crap from those people. I won't. Since my life on the D-list ended last year, Griffin's main focus is once again stand-up. Do you guys remember when Bruce Jenner was Bruce Jenner? Now he doesn't even have eyebrows left and he wears... And making sure she's never away from the camera for too long. If you think it's just about being famous, you're only half right. It's about being rich and famous. I'm very open. I'm not an artist. I tell inappropriate stories and jokes, and I try to make people laugh. How much of it is about money? I'm very driven by money, and you know, I... Not a lot of people will admit that, in, especially... I don't in, know who they're trying to kid. To me, it's like the plastic surgery. Who are these people in Hollywood acting like they don't have plastic surgery and they're not driven by money? I am very driven by money. Also, I, you know, I'm in a business with zero job security, especially as a 50-year-old woman. So I do feel like I have to live every single day like I'm going to lose it all tomorrow. Which may explain why Kathy Griffin is still on the road 120 days a year. The world also still holds a lot of allure for you, right? I mean, genuinely. Absolutely. This world is attractive and mysterious and BS all at the same time. You're still a fan, basically, yeah? I'm a fan first. So when I make fun of someone in my act, it doesn't mean I'm not a fan. In fact, I'm actually a huge fan of most of the people I make fun of. But they're also ridiculous. I love Oprah. Because you know my joke is that I love her, but she thinks she's Jesus? And she's ridiculous. They are not mutually exclusive. And when she gets a paper cut, she's like, oh, stigmata? <laughs> no, Oprah, it's not stigmata. Yes, it, no, it's a paper cut. No, but I, no, Oprah. Get off the cross and do your show.